All right, everybody, before we begin, very big giveaway, 100 plus XRP. All you have to do to enter is press the like button, subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite coin is. If we hit 500 likes within 24 hours, we are giving it away, and you can enter by doing these things. Having said that, today is another pretty interesting day in crypto. Whales are buying XRP, Ripple becomes world's third most valuable crypto, and the world is going to the shiz hole. The reason I'm not saying that is because YouTube sometimes doesn't like you cursing and all of that, right? They don't really like that, so let me keep it nice. <laughs> no, just kidding, guys. But of course, the world is going a little bit, a little, a little, little bit to shit. And the reason I'm saying that is because of a lot of these articles and a lot of the stuff I'm reading right now. And one of those things is banks bundled bad debt, bet against it, and won. Now, anybody with a keen eye has noticed that this article comes from December 23rd, 2009, and is actually already 10 to 11 years old. Now, one of the fun facts is that this article is actually a lot more relevant than a lot of the articles I'm seeing right now. And the basic premise of that, or the point that I'm trying to make here, is that banks bundled bad debt, and that's actually the really coinciding with the videos I made earlier, where a lot of these banks right now are really, really not doing well. Even though they got their crypto custodial services announcements and all of that, a lot of banks have gone bankrupt and a lot of support has been given to these banks from the Fed, right? They're supporting them like crazy because they couldn't really handle it. And that's again, a little bit of a way off. Here, the banks might not seem to do as bad because they got a lot of support, Support is still a bad thing for the economy, right? And, and maybe it's even worse that they did the support than just leave the banks go with their natural flow. But that's something for a whole nother day. What's important is the second part. They bet against it and won. Now, one of the very interesting things that a lot of people don't know is that it's not only it's not only the individuals, it's not only the contrarians, not only the real crazy autistic ones that bet against the market. No. It is actually big billion dollar companies as well, like banks and I guess big institutional investors who know what's going on. And I'm not trying to, you know, quote the big short here where there's just like a couple of guys who are like, hey man, let's short it. And they're like, nah, screw you. We're going to go up for all, forever. No, these banks are realistic. These banks know there's a good possibility at any time that this economy can just flip over and fall to the ground hard. So they're always prepared. They're always knowing of it. And trust me on this one, guys, these banks know their numbers better than you do. All right. So they know better than you do that what's going on right now. Yeah, it's not going to be working. And for example, the situation right now with some heavy quantitative easing and with a lot of this trust that's kind of going away. Uh, and all, all the situation that's going on surrounding that right now, where like, the future of cash is not that uh, avail or that that um, sure anymore, and people are trusting their government less. There's debates about the next world currency and all of that. Yeah, banks know it a lot better than we do because they got a lot more inside information. And so another thing is that once things start to hit the fan. They'll be one of the ones shorting it the hardest. They'll be the ones who are betting against it the heaviest to a certain degree. Right now, a bank betting against you know everything falling and the banks falling is kind of bad, right? Because if the banks bet against it, uh, if, if the banks are falling, well, what happens then is the banks are kind of betting against themselves, right? But it just depends on how you want to interpret this title. I'm not even talking about the article. I'm just talking about the title here. What you can also see is, well, banks could, if everything goes to the shithole, support that move and be like, you know what, let's actually, you know, also go with the flow and say it's going to go bad because they'll earn a lot of money then by shorting things. On the contrary, they can also be like, all right, things are going to the shithole. Things are doing really, really bad. Let's say it's going to recover anytime soon. And both can work. Both can do really, really well. But the thing is, banks have the same for banks. No. And the same for all this cash uh, these theories that we're making and the thoughts we're having surrounding, you know, what will Americans do with all this cash? Um, people don't use coins as often. They're hoarding them. People like gold and silver and a lot of those precious metals a lot more than before. People don't want to use cash. People hold less cash on hands. A lot of the oracles I've been talking about and, and seeing. Banks know it, all right? Banks know exactly how much comes in, exactly how much comes out. And they know a lot quicker than we do that a new cashless society is going to be coming up. They know when. They understand the concept. We don't have those numbers. They do, right? They get all these numbers on a day-to-day -day basis. They know exactly what is going on. 
With all of that though, they know also what type of need is necessary. Now, a lot of the things we're seeing the last couple of days is, all right, people wanna get away from cash. Like it's, it's pretty damn obvious. In an average week, roughly three in 10 adults said they make zero purchases using cash. And uh, I'm probably gonna be one of those three where I used to do everything in cash like the last couple of years, um, up to like three years ago when I certainly, when crypto did the boom, I, I really, really got away from cash altogether where I'm not really using it at all anymore because why would you, right? What's what's the nice point in it? What, where's the good part? Only maybe that you're not followed as much because they can't scan what you do um, as obviously, but still, you know, on a lot of the things you want to buy your names on there anyway. So, you know, and, and that's the that's the bad part. They, they the banks, they don't want you to have uh, cash because it's not monitorable as easy, right? They, the bigger companies, they don't want you to have cash because they can't see for the advertisements, maybe. I don't know if they give any of that information out or things like that. Uh, exactly what thing is being purchased at what time and all of that, right? They want you to buy it with your card. They want the info. They want the knowledge. So they're going to be stimulating that. However, why is that good for XRP? Why is that in my story today? Well, the more that cash fades away, the more of a necessity is needed for an online framework, an online system, which can handle, first of all, transactions and transactions that is in the e-commerce payments and really from small to medium enterprises, mostly. Uh, for the bigger corporations, it's all a little bit more sturdy. It goes a little bit less quickly. But I'm talking about the smaller parts, which is really Ripple's speciality or speciality and, and focus and priority. Now, with less cash in circulation, with less trust in the system that they will be supporting cash ever, and also with less trust in the US dollar and the government in general, with less trust in assets and all of that, also comes up the need of more liquidity because, well, if you trust the dollar less, you want to be able to really easily switch it over to another currency if all hits the fan. Same for assets where you're like, hmm, you know, if I don't like my assets, I want to be able to quickly sell them for something else, or I want to quickly get, be able to get out. And for example, hmm, if I want to move countries right now because the U.S. is collapsing, I want to be quick. And all of that, first of all, these banks know it. And that's why they're also are looking for a lot of options to make sure that people can't do that. <laughs> they're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. But also, that's where Ripple comes in, right? That's where XRP comes in. It really takes a lot of those boxes where really if you're afraid of something happening, they're there for you. On the contrary, though, you could see it both ways where banks could also be like, you know what? Let's actually get away from all this friction. Let's actually hop onto, for example, Ripple to make sure that they don't need to go away, that they don't need to be able to be liquid or anything like that because we provide it for them. We make sure that they're always in a good spot so they don't need to ever go. And that's why Ripple is one of the best systems out there. They're good in a crisis where people don't trust the government or don't trust currencies or don't trust the Fed. And they're good in a bad part where people, uh, or no, you guys know what I mean. Like they're good in bad and good because if they're doing really, really good, uh, then Ripple is there to just help them out, help them get to another level uh, on top of it. If they're doing bad, Ripple and XRP can make sure that people can escape. And, you know, it's, it's really, really nice to hear that. Now, another thing I just noticed, lawsuit. Investors can't prove Ripple knew XRP had no utility. Lawyers for Brad Gollinghouse haven't argued the Ripple CEO's statements in extolling, extolling XRP were true. Simply that they can be proven false. And I think this has a little bit to do, again, at least in the media here, with a lot of these statements from earlier. Ripple executive says crypto payment startup tried to give away its massive holdings of $55 billion. David Swartz said, we tried as soon as you could sell XRP easily, giving away became really, really hard. And a little bit more of those statements where they didn't have a use case at first and all of that before. Here you can also see here, such... No such commitments were made for XRP when giving away all the, the currency, by the way. You can see it here. <laughs> Pretty interesting one that was. And uh, looking into it, you can see the federal case against Ripple Labs has taken an unexpected turn as the legal team representing the firm and CEO Brad Gollinghouse have argued any statements they made overstating the utility of XRP token can't be proven false. According to court filings obtained by Law 360, lawyers for Ripple and G have argued plaintiff and XRP investor Bradley Sostek is unable to prove that Ripple misled investors with bullish claims about XRP and sold the token as an unregistered security. The legal team has referred to Sostek's statements as unsupported leaps of logic. In short, plaintiff fails to offer the factual allegations needed to show that Ripple's and Mr. Gollinghouse's statements were false when made, the filing said. No utility at all. 
Lawyer for Solstack used the argument that XRP has no utility at all, something Ripple's legal team says should have been raised in the initial lawsuit against the firm. The original case against the crypto firm began in 2019, when attorneys for Sostek fought a class action lawsuit against Ripple, alleging that it has sold its XRP token as an unregistered security, and yeah, a lot of that has been going on for a a very, very good while. A very, very good while. The suit claimed that Ripple knowingly overstated the crypto's actual utility as a bridge currency to facilitate international payments while they were just liquidating their own tokens for money. According to the filing, lawyers argued that Sostack has been unable to explain why any alleged misstatements made by Ripple or Ganyas are in fact false. Plaintiff offers no reason to pleads or and pleads no fact regarding how Mr. Garlinghouse's statement could confuse the public if it is true, the court filing said. Pretty interesting, guys. Pretty damn interesting to see all of that. I think this is looking really, really juicy and really, really positive. Now, to keep in this lawsuit and keep in this negative vibe about that a little bit, I just noticed one of the articles from earlier this year as well. YouTube suspends Ripple's text chief days after XRP scam lawsuit filing. I just wanted to tell you guys once more that I'm really, really wondering how this YouTube lawsuit is going to roll out because I still think there are scam videos and advertisements on this video as we speak right now. Is there not? Is there no advertisement on here? Just asking, you know, send me one, I'll send you two back and things like that, that stupid stuff. And... The reason I, I, I'm putting this up again is because I'm doing a couple of giveaways right now, but there's really nothing you have to do, all right? I will never ask you to send money, but because I'm doing it, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should not do it right now in this period where these fake giveaways are still a thing because people might get the wrong issue that giveaways are really, really normal. No, guys, they are not normal. Uh, a lot of people don't really do it. The the reason, the main reason I'm doing it is, is all because of a bigger story where the main reason I started into all of this is because somebody sent me a donation because I commented on YouTube, all right? So it's really close to my heart. And whenever I feel like I'm having a good day, I'm like, you know what, guys? Let me let me help you guys out. Because 100 XRP, well, it could change people's lives, right? Really, I'm, I'm thinking about that. 50 XRP per person, for example, it's, it's not that much in dollar amounts, but maybe it's to start to something bigger because I got a 0.01 BTC donation you know, here, we're talking years ago, years ago. And that really started it all, right? And the main reason for that is I was like, you know what? This stuff, I can make this into more and more and more. And that got me thinking like, hey, you know what? I could do this and do that. And all of that got me going up. And maybe if I just send somebody 50 XRP, which is just how much? Divide by four, just a couple bucks, maybe 12 bucks, 13 bucks. Yeah, maybe they could just change his whole life, but him getting a lot of traction and all of that, which is something I'm thinking about, which I really, really hope. That's why I'm doing that. Um, and a lot of these guys out there, they're just trying to make you send the money. Don't think it's the same thing. Don't think it's anything along those lines that everybody's just so generous or nice. No, most of the time, there's something else going on. In this case here, I'm telling you guys exactly why it's going on. So think about that. All right. Just having a little bit of a warning going on there. Ripple paid MoneyGram $15.1 in market development fees in Q2. Pretty interesting to hear that. Pretty scary, though, to a certain degree. Like, that's a lot of money. But on the contrary, I'm always really, really positive with these types of announcements just because, well, if you're invested in MoneyGram, that's really, really positive. And also, who cares if they're paying for MoneyGram to use ODL? It's a positive thing, right? I mean, in the end, look how much popularity it has brought for them. It's only good stuff. And also, Ripple owns a major, or at least a good stake in MoneyGram. So, Ripple paying them for that is also not that strange. You know, paying MoneyGram to, to do better, so... All right, Coinbase announces 19 new crypto for probabilistic listing. Yeah, that was something that was really, really trendy, right? A little bit earlier. These new assets include, in alphabetical order, Apple Fort, yada, yada, yada. The only one I was really, really excited about was this one right here, actually. Two ones, Hedera Hashgraph and Kava. You know, these are two coins I've been watching for a little while. A lot of you guys told me to go and watch uh, HBAR, which is Hedera Hashgraph, and Kava. A lot of you guys comment that as well. Paxos Gold, I sometimes see, but I don't know too much about. The rest of these coins, I really don't care for. But yeah, those two, I'm really, really excited to see. And I don't know if they're going to be really, really getting on there just quite yet. But at least the idea that they're going to be coming on is already really, really good, in my opinion. Then Joe Rogan tells 200 million podcast listeners to stack sats with, gold, with Cash App advertisement. Cash App is a Bitcoin retail, well, I mean, it's not a, necessarily a Bitcoin retail app, but it, it can also be used as that. Bitcoin retail app using 
which people can buy and spend Bitcoin and develop by Square, a venture of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. That sounds a little bit stupid, this sentence, but yes, it's a little bit the way it's going on. And um, I think that's pretty cool. And then this bull market can get even crazier than the Monster 2017 rally. What I actually have to say about this is a lot of theorists have been claiming that this Twitter hack and all of that has actually been uh, a little bit part of the bigger picture, where they want to really promote Bitcoin like crazy to make investors, first of all, rich, but also go for the newer system. And and Twitter, I can see both ways, where Twitter is all sometimes really, really contra to it all, where Twitter is like, you know what, screw the normal way of doing things like YouTube and Facebook. We just don't allow a lot of this stuff. We're really, really decentralized to a certain degree. We're allowing a lot more than on these other platforms. I mean, you can post a lot of naughty pictures on Twitter and it'll be fine, right? Try doing that to YouTube or to, to Facebook. Good luck. Instagram, try it. That's no, not going to work. And so Twitter kind of has an 18 plus vibe to it where you can do a lot, a lot of things. Now, looking at that, I've also seen more advertisements for Bitcoin on Twitter than on any platform in the world, any other one. What I'm thinking about as well this is that maybe there's a bigger plan going on where they're trying to promote crypto like crazy through Twitter into such a, uh, a big elaborate scam thing where it's really not that big of a deal, but then they made it out to be or something like that. I don't really know. Because this, this stack sets, uh, why would they say stack sets? You know, Cash App, Cash App and stack sets, they really don't fall in the same category, I find. I don't think most people use Cash App for that. And it's developed by Square, a venture of the Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey, which, which kind of, you know, kind of falls together there, which is really kind of strange and interesting to think about. So yeah, that's just something I'm, I'm thinking about there. Let me know what you think about all of that. While promoting the Cash App, Rogan read aloud, Bitcoin is a transformational digital currency that acts as a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment network powered by its users with no central authority. I love it. I wish it was the way we exchange currency and maybe it will be in the future. Get on board. Rogan saying that, huh? Joe Rogan. Damn, guys. That's big. This bull market can't get even crazier than the 2017 Monster Rally. BTC is just shy of 12 months high, closing the week out over 10.5k. Would be solid confirmation with Fed printing trillions and yeah, again, another trillion dollars at least with heels and setting more dovish tones. New stimulus coming soon, all season having just started and more crypto companies getting listed on the NASDAQ. The market is bullish. I'm actually pretty bullish about crypto as well. You know, I'm thinking really, really good vibes with it all. Getting close to 11.5k, XRP really above 25 cents heavily right now. All good vibes, all looking good and are really, really positive for the future. Ripple is the future. Whales are buying into it. The banks... Even if they don't handle, even if they will handle, Ripple will come out prosperous and come on top. So all I can say is cash is fading, XRP the new standard. Let's go, guys.